Today we're gonna to be testing out a new product, but before we get started, I want everyone to know that every single battery inverter charger MPPT on the market has been complete trash. Every single one of them has an issue. Even the Goal Zero, which is like the highest quality one, people are taking it apart to add their own MPPT because the solar input voltage is so limited. So every single one on the market is just pathetic. I've told literally every manufacturer out there what they need to do and what they need to put in it, and they still have not delivered a good product. The American made ones are trash, the Chinese ones are trash, and today we're gonna test out this one, and I'm hoping it's not trash. Trash. On paper, this one seems amazing. It has a 1500 watt hour battery. It has a 1000 watt inverter and you can connect up to 500 watts of solar panel power. So this might be the one that will take over the market, but I have very low hopes because I've been disappointed so many times by so many manufacturers. So let's get started and see if this is actually worth our time. These names always, oh my God, it stinks. That is smelly. It smells like Harbor Freight, but look at this name, you guys, Blue Eddy Max Oak. Would you ever think to name a solar product a Blue Eddy? Like, they always come up with these silly names. And so on the back, we have a cooling fan, and then we have the inverter output, and it says 1,000 watts. We have a handle on top. That's actually really nice. So we have a power button, a DC on, AC on for the inverter. We have USB ports and it even has a USB-C with 45 watt max. So you could actually charge up small laptops with that. And then we have a cigarette lighter in the input for the solar panels and the charger. And it shows how many watts is going in and out for the DC and the AC. And I really like that. It's only the higher quality ones that come with that. Now let's turn on the inverter and see if it shows the standby consumption. And it does not. So that means that the watts right here are at the output. You guys, look at this plug. I don't think 10 amps can go through that little tiny thing. In 60 volts, this better be a really nice plug, man. Ooh. So the output of the charger is 42 volts at four amps. That means that this will charge way faster than most of the other solar generators on the market. Oh, look at that, it's charging. Oh, this is cool. 170 watts, you guys, and the fan's turned on while it's charging. And it also has an MC4 adapter so you can connect your solar panels to this system. Now we're testing this unit with 400 watts of polycrystalline 12 volt panels. And those panels are in series, and these are in series, and then these two groups are in parallel. So we have 42 volts going in, at 10 amps, and that does not exceed the limits of this unit. But if you wanna do 500 watts for what it's rated for, you're going to run into some problems with 12 volt panels. Because if I were to put these into series of three, we would have over 60 volts, and then it would exceed the max voltage input of this unit. And if I were to add another in parallel pair to this system, we will exceed the current rating of this unit. So 400 watts of panels is perfect and it works really well. And with this size solar array, it can charge in three to four hours. And right now we're getting 327 watts. The sun is directly overhead, but there is some light clouds. So now I connected my own watt meter and it has the same exact watt rating as the on-screen display. And the working voltage looks great and it's a true MPPT, but you can see that the amps, it's only 6.9 amps. So we just don't have enough sunshine. There's just too many clouds in the sky right now. Now we're gonna test the cigarette lighter with a watt meter, an inverter, and a heat gun. And it says that we can pull nine amps. And we are pulling 106 watts at the output and 100 watts at the battery. And it can power this load. This is 9.4 amps. And this is only rated for nine amps. So it passed this test. You could easily power a 12 volt fridge off of this receptacle. It should be able to handle that initial draw. Now we're gonna test the inverter, and this is where most of these units fail, so this will be really cool. So when we test this, we wanna see how well the inverter is matched to the battery, because a lot of them on the market have too small of a battery to handle the discharge rate required for the inverter. So we're gonna put the max load of 1,000 watts for the 1,000 watt inverter and see how long it can run until it will cut out. 
And if it does cut out, then we will drop it down to 900 or 800 watts and then see how long it can power that load. And if the inverter is matched well for the battery, it should be able to draw the whole battery under max load. And that will be awesome if it does. So let's turn it on and then press the start button. Right now we're pulling 1000 watts. So we're gonna see how long it can run this load for. And on the display, it says it's pulling 1100 to 1050 watts. So we can use that to figure out the inverter efficiency uh oh two minutes and 30 seconds so that's a big bummer we're gonna drop it down to like 900 watts and see if it can pull that load now we're pulling 920 to 930 watts if you look at the display on the front of the unit it's pulling around 1000 watts exactly so it should be able to pull this for a lot longer So it lasted an hour and 14 minutes at 900 watts. And we have an error code of E008. So it's under voltage protection for the first cell and there's four cells. So that means that the battery is depleted. We're gonna have to do the math and figure out if it pulled the full capacity or not. And the case is pretty warm, but there's no hot spots. Yeah, it won't even turn on now. So this thing's completely dead. So we have a number 1,294, and at the C rate that we were discharging, this is actually a really good watt hour count. This also includes the 40 watt hours when we discharged at 1,000 watts, and then it cut off after two and a half minutes. And this also includes the inverter efficiency of 90%. So it's a very typical reading. So with the inverter efficiency losses, you can pull 1,000 watts from the battery, but it will not pull 1000 watts at the output receptacle, which is seemingly common. I haven't found a single one that cannot do that anyways. And if you want to pull anything more than that, it actually says that the battery is rated for 1200 watts for two and a half minutes in the manual. But considering the inverter efficiency losses, I would imagine that's more like 1100 to 1050. So that means that the discharge rate of this one is double the Energy Apex, and this one's cheaper, but it's not as good as the Goal Zero output. I'm not sure what inverter and battery pack combo they use. It's more heavier, so they might be using more cells to achieve that discharge rate, but the Goal Zero does have a better discharge rate at the inverter. So it didn't really perform that great and it didn't perform badly at all. It's right in the middle. You guys, check this out. I've been reading the manual and it has low temperature protection. That's really good. Any lithium battery should have that and a lot of these things don't, so that's impressive. But one bummer that I just found is that you cannot charge it with a car cigarette lighter adapter. You cannot plug it in right here because this MPPT input is not current limited. So you could actually hurt this unit if you tried to charge it with your car. So do not do that. But there is a way to charge it with the car. You get a 12 volt tiny inverter and you plug this into it and you plug this into your car and then you can charge this on the go. And we have a new error code E006, but it means there's over temperature protection for charging the battery. So right now it's too hot because the inverter is right next to the battery cells. So it's waiting to cool down before it can charge itself up again. The reason the screen is on is because the cells have recovered a little bit. So we can actually turn it on now. But it still cannot charge until it cools off a bit. I wish I had some 50 volt solar panels because then we could push the 500 watts and see if this little adapter would actually melt. We should look this up online and see how much current these are rated for. Then we'll have an actual answer. So I just looked it up online and these can handle 10 amps, so you don't have to worry about it. If you wanna max out the solar input and not use 12 volt panels, you need to get two 50 volt panels that are 250 watts each, put them in parallel, and then connect them here, and you will be set. I'm a little bit surprised. This thing is actually working really well. You guys got to see how many of these I have tested. They send me these things and I don't even make videos of them because they're not even on the market. They're prototypes and they are complete and utter junk. They are so junky. So it's really nice to actually see one that actually works. Now that we've tested this unit, let's talk about the pros and cons and how it compares to other solar generators for this price and the watt hour capacity of the battery. So first we have the Goal Zero 1400 watt hour and it is a great unit. It has a larger inverter than the Blue Eddy and you can run that thing at max load until it's practically dead. But it is heavier and the solar input is not as great and it costs a lot more. And if you use one of my video hacks where we go over how to open up the Goal Zero and 
add your own Victron, you're going to be spending $2,000 if you want to increase that input voltage limit. So for the goal zero, it's $2,000 and you get 1400 watt hours of available battery. Now let's compare it to the Energy Apex. With that model, it's 1100 watt hour battery and it's $1,800. You have expandability, which the other solar generators do not have, but you cannot connect lead acids unless you'll kill them. I do not recommend those ones, and I took them off of my website, all energy Kodiak and Apex generators, because they have too many problems. There's quality control issues, the switch fell off, and you guys can watch all of those videos. The solar input says it's good, but you have to use their panels, and a lot of people don't wanna spend that extra money. This unit has the same input capabilities as the Apex and has pretty much double the output of the Apex and it's cheaper by like $400. So already, I mean, this thing is blowing away the competition just from price and results from our tests. And the solar input is way better, but it's not good enough, all right? 60 volts is way better than Goal Zero or Energy or any other solar generator on the market right now, but it should be like 100 or 150. I would say that it's good if it's 200 volts, so I could string all the panels in series. So 60 volts is okay, it's the best on the market, but it's still not that great. Next, it's not expandable. If you want a bigger battery, you can't do anything about it. There is no way to make this battery bigger besides buying another one. Also, the support for this thing does not look good. Go on the Max Oak website. They need to fix that website. It is horrible. There were broken links all over the place. The lack of information, the manual, everything was so hard to find. I do not recommend them, but it does come with a warranty card and they give you two of them and it's signed by a real human. But I really don't know how good this company is. So I have no idea how good this warranty would actually be. Next thing I dislike is that it does not have quick charge USB. It does have a USB-C, which is awesome. So it might be quick charge for you, but it doesn't have the QC ports that I like and what I see in most solar generators on the market today. So that's a downside. And something else to mention is that this output for the cigarette lighter is regulated, but it's at 12.3 volts. The Jackery is the only other one on the market that regulates the output for the cigarette lighter and it's at 13.2 volts. So it's nice that it's regulated because it will still perform better than, oh, say the Energy Apex that at like half state of charge, you're at 10 something volts. Because if you're running a 12 volt appliance, the performance will decrease a lot if your battery's low. With this one, it will still power it great, but it will not power it as well as the Jackery. I wish they had like a 13.6 volt regulated output. It would handle loads better. It would be better in every single way. But the output is good current wise. So you can power 12 volt appliances, no problem but I wish that it was a bit better, but it's still better than most of the ones on the market. So it's good. Also, there was a bad review on Amazon that was posted this morning. He said that the charge rate was slow and I was like, compared to what? Like everything on the market is way slow. So I really don't know where he's coming up with that. Maybe he's talking about the AC input charger because it's only 170 watts, but that's faster than most of all of the solar generators on the market today, but I guess Goal Zero came out with one and it might charge faster, but I don't know how fast those ones charge, but yeah, I'll have to look into that. So yes, there are pros and cons, but I think it's the best one right now. I mean, that's not saying much, and there are some things that I dislike, but it's probably the best one I've tested so far. So it's pretty impressive. The next thing we need to think about though is I've only had this for a week. We should wait a couple months and see as people buy these if there's quality control issues or if like an inverter fails after three months. So it's really hard for me to draw a complete conclusion from these tests, but I think overall I can recommend it. And some people might think I'm a little too harsh because I like systems that last 20 years with lithium iron phosphate, but I understand who is buying this. And if you have like a van or RV and you want off-grid power, this is a good unit. You could actually power like a tiny home off of this. I would not like the inverter size, but if all you're powering is some laptops, lights, and maybe a cooking appliance, you will be all right. But if you want better output, you should go with the Goal Zero no matter what. The output is incredible compared to all the other ones on the market. But if you want something with a built-in MPPT and has all the other functionality that you want, 
and has like a good size battery for the price. Like for the price, you can't beat this. If you guys disagree with anything I'm saying, I'm just imagining the comments while I'm making this video of what people are gonna critique. But yeah, if you guys disagree with anything, please let me know. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And for me personally, I keep the Goal Zero because I like it. It's a good unit for output. It's incredible. And if you're not gonna go over 300 watts of solar, I absolutely love those. And I'm gonna keep this one. I like it. I actually returned the Energy Apex because the switch fell off and I didn't ask for another one to test because I don't really care. I don't think it's that great for the price and the quality and blah, blah, blah. But what I'm really happy about is that we keep complaining and they're building better, cheaper, bigger units. I love it. The fact that we have MPPT now, it's because of these videos that these manufacturers are fixing the problems. And for people that live in a van or an RV and they have smaller than a 400 watt solar array, this is probably all they will need. But if you want a really good system, then check out my website because we have DIY raw cell systems. We have the Battleborn systems. If you want to build a really big system, don't even mess with these. Just stick to the modular systems or the all-in-one units with MPP. Actually, I've only been using all-in-one power systems lately because they are so good. Another point I want to mention is that the all-in-one systems are awesome, but the 12 volt ones are lacking and the largest size inverter is only 800 watts. But I I told the manufacturers, I was like, you guys need to fix this right now. And I think they're going to do it. I said 1500 to 2000 watts and some other things that it needs to have. And I think they're going to do it. So we might have a really cool system coming out here soon. And ever since I made my all-in-one power system video, a lot of manufacturers have been sending me their new relabeled units and they do not compare to the MPP. A lot of people complained to me about that in the forums before, and they were absolutely correct. I cannot change the settings. I keep getting error codes for no reason. It is crazy. So yeah, stick to the ones that are reviewed and that have been in business for a long time, because even though they're relabeled and you might find another one that looks identical to this one, that might have another label on here, it might not work the same way. And I don't understand why. I think they have their own firmware or something and I don't understand why I had so many issues with those relabeled ones, but they're not all the same. So yeah, this was a long video to explain all the pros and cons, but I hope you guys liked it. I thought it was pretty fun to do this. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.